Memory is a strange thing. It doesn't work like I thought it did. We are so bound by time, by its order. But now I'm not so sure I believe in beginnings and endings. There are days that define your story beyond your life. So that was just a little piece I put together the other day, basically in the hopes of creating a film look without the help of any sort of LUTs or plugins. So welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys are doing well and thriving. So what I wanna do is I wanna dive into my DaVinci Resolve process for color grading this footage in an effort of creating a film look that I was happy with. So hopping into DaVinci Resolve, first things first, what we wanna do is we wanna actually go to the settings in the bottom right hand corner and we wanna navigate to the color management table. And under this section of the settings, what you wanna do is you want to copy the color management setup that I have here. So copy everything exactly as is. I'm not gonna go into detail as to an explanation. There's multiple videos and channels out there that go in depth uh, regarding color management and why you should use certain style. So with this, you should copy everything as it is except for the input color space. So I was shooting on S-Log3. So that is why I selected that here. So just select whatever picture profile you and were shooting with for your footage. So once you hit save, you'll notice that your footage has already been converted from log to rec 709 gamma 2.2 or 2.4. So this is a far more manageable color space. And from there, we can start making our adjustments. We don't wanna slap on any LUTs or do anything like that. We wanna basically delve into the actual grading process and do everything from scratch. Put in the real work and you know, prove to ourselves that we can actually do this. And we don't have to rely on any crappy teal and orange LUTs to actually grade our footage. So hopping into this, I'm just gonna go node from node, uh, turning them on as I go, and basically showing you guys what I adjusted in each given node. So let's start with the exposure tab. So with the exposure tab, uh, first things first, I bumped up the offset to 30.25. And then going to the HDR tab here, I decreased the global exposure to negative 0.83. And then in the curves, I adjusted the curves, as you can see here, just to provide a little bit more lift to the image, a little bit more pop. And that's pretty much all for the exposure. So then moving on over to white balance. So for the white balance, I'll turn that on. As you can see, it significantly warmed up the footage. So I boosted the color temperature to 960. I did not do this in camera, I should have. I did more of a neutral temperature in camera, but I boosted it way up here for this scenario. And then going to the primary color wheels, I adjusted the lift, as you can see here. I adjusted the gamma and the gain a little bit and also brought down the offset to 24.75, so just slightly. And then also brought the tint up to eight. So then moving to the log wheels, adjusted the shadows just to balance them out a little bit. I adjusted the midtones and I adjusted the highlights. And I also decreased the saturation to 40.4 and did a slight color boost of just one. And then moving on to the curves. So again, adjusted the curves here, just a slight change to the image. Moving on next, we just did a color adjustment tab and so as you can see, this just changes the overall color scheme of the image slightly. So just moving into the curves, adjusted the red curve just slightly there, adjusted the overall curve ever so slightly. And then going into the hue versus hue, a lot of these colors were altered here to achieve a given look. And then the hue versus saturation. So saturations were brought down significantly in some scenarios. So with greens uh, and some yellows. And then hue versus luminance. So the green luminances 
were brought down. All right, and so then moving on to our parallel nodes. So the first one, it was skin tones to isolate those skin tones. And so what I did was I was in the hue versus hue, so just ever so slight adjustment of the skin tones just to get the desired kind of orangier, orangier, yellowier look for the skin tones. And then the saturation, I actually bumped the saturation up here and the luminance, bump the luminance up ever so slightly there. So with the shirt and the page of the book, adjusted the overall hues here, decreased the overall saturation, and just left the hue versus the luminance the same. So then I added the glow effect, which can be found in the effects panel. So you can just search it up, drag it into your node, and then the adjustments I, I made here brought down the shine threshold to zero, brought down the spread to zero, and then I changed the composite type to soft light, and then I adjusted the global blend to 0 0.331. All right, so then I added a lift tab, which basically I just wanted to boost the overall image, and with that, I just adjusted the curves here, as you can see. So just minor adjustments, but it just elevated the image ever so slightly just to make the highlights and midtones pop. And then what I did was, this is just a personal preference, is I added two gradients, one at each of the bottom corners, just to darken it and just to try to bring more focus towards the subject, which in this case is the hand. Uh, you don't have to do this, this is a personal preference, but I just find it kind of adds another level of depth to the overall image. Next, what I did was I added film grain. So again, with this, you can just search this up in the effects panel over here and then drag and drop into your node. So with this, I'll zoom in here just so we can get a sense of before and after, before and after. So this, uh, yeah, I wanted to make it pretty grainy. So what I did was I did a custom overlay here and then composite type overlay and then adjusted the texture, overall grain size and the grain strength. And that's pretty much it for the film grain. So I was basically just wanting the film grain to add another layer to the overall image and just make it a little bit more convincing that this could potentially be a film shot. Obviously it wasn't, but yeah, just wanted to add that aspect of film because otherwise it just looks way too digital without any film grain. And then the final step was to actually add a little bit of halation. So again, just uh, navigate to the effects panel in the top right corner and search up halation, drag and drop onto your node. And I just wanted this to be subtle. I find this can be overdone in some scenarios and I just didn't want it to be too obnoxious. So I just wanted subtle amounts of halation just to focus kind of on the highlights. So as you can see, just subtly makes the highlights kind of a little bit more dreamy and film-like. Uh, you could do it more or less. It's totally a personal preference, but I just wanted it to be very subtle. So as you can see, here are my settings that I used for Relation. And so yeah, that's pretty much it. So as you can see, we started with a color managed image that had been converted from S-Log3 to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.2. So this is a much more visually appealing image and it makes it a little bit more easy to grade. And then we basically did all of our adjustments found in the node tree here to create an image that looks like that. So before and after and after. So obviously this isn't a perfect example of how you should create a film look. This is just something that I kind of put together for fun. I really enjoyed trying to emulate that film look without the use of any sort of LUTs or plugins. There are a lot of awesome LUTs and plugins out there to help you with the process of achieving different film looks, but I just wanted to kind of put the challenge upon myself to create this look without the assistance of any of those. There are so many people who are reluctant to actually put in the time to create these looks that they want for their footage. Instead, they are kind of overly willing to apply a lot and just kind of call it a day. So I think it's so important to put the hours in, make a ton of mistakes, learn from those, just basically 
get creative with it and just make a bunch of adjustments, put in the time and chances are you'll get a lot better at color grading and you won't have to rely on LUTs. But anyway, so this is how I achieved this look here. Hope you guys enjoy it. If you guys have any suggestions for future videos, hit me up with those in the comments. But yeah, anyways, thank you for the support yet again. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.